you know, he don't make no joke. He just <laughs> say, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the disciples and everything that he had, they were all guilty of something. And he took all the lift of the world, he just changed it. You know, and I look at all these people in the rooms and all kinds of around us. Uh, these people are talented, gifted. And, I, you know, it's just like the book said, addiction is only a symptom of what's really going on with you. And if we would just take the time, and I'm talking about me, to look at me, examine me, and be willing to change some things about me. And see, that's one good thing about sponsorship, because he sees things that I choose to ignore. Or I just say, well, that's just part of my makeup. But all in all, it's just bad behavior. But he can see it, and he'll comment as a look. I mean, you might want to take a look at that. You know, but that's what we do for one another. We tell each other the truth. You know, they told me the truth don't need popping up. The truth will set you free. You know, and see, when, when I was able and willing to look at me, that's when I started to uh, grow that's when I started to grow in the fellowship. And, then, and, and that's when I started to have a God of my understanding. You know, when I went back to the church, I went back to the church because I wanted to give something back to God for what he's freely given to me. And that's my freedom. You know, you know the meaning of just being truly free? Not being caught up in bondage or something? You know, and, and I thought I was losing my mind in this. Why am I giving this little bit of substance so much power over me? Why can't I just say, I don't want this no more? You know, I stood in the rain trying to smoke and saying, when they come back with my car, I'm going home. When all of a sudden they give me some more and I'm still stuck. And it took me to a place where I wanted to commit suicide. Black people don't kill themselves. Drugs took me to a point where I just didn't want to be here today. I didn't want to look at that guy anymore. I remember family members would come down from up and off or whatever, and I'd always make an excuse for my brother. I'd make an excuse not to be there because I didn't want him to see me the way I had become. You know, I, I, I got a pair of sweatpants on under some jeans, you know, because I fell off that one. And I would do stuff like um, <laughs> tell my wife I'm going to the store and disappear for like three four weeks. Be gone for a week. And still going to work. And the guy, you still at the same point? Yeah. yeah you know, I'm working anyway. I'm just going to. He was going to some kind of excuse. I was doing what I was doing. And you know, I thought, I said, wow, man, I ain't never going to get, get off this thing. I went to the, uh, my, my, my nurse at the time, the pastor, and I went over there and I remember it like, you know, like, like it was yesterday, and, and I was telling him that I need him to pray for me, and I was telling him what I was doing, and I was telling him how I was, and he's an old school nurse, and he just looked at me, because you know, he looked at me like I was his son too, because he, I grew up next door to him, and, um, I said, son, what you want me to do? I said, pray for me, son. Put some oil on me, son. You know. But you know what? People can do anything they want to do until you're willing and ready to stop. You know, most time. But I had took myself to the point where I'm either going to do this or I'm going to And I knew it. I felt it. So that second go around in that rehab, I remember saying, God, I can't do this no more by myself. If you're out there, if you're out there, and you hear me, please let me. And uh, it was like somebody just wrapped a wall bag around me. And I felt that one. And uh, it's just like somebody said, son, you're going to be all right. And uh, I've been clean ever since. 